Dear students, the point of this video is to explain to you what I've got planned for the spring 2022 semester for Anthropology and Sociology 216 Marriage and Kinship. The first thing that I want to do, however, is to apologize for the audio quality. I've been stranded in the US. I don't have access to my usual equipment. I should have access to some better equipment soon, but know that I won't usually be this echoey on the rest of our class materials. And this brings me to the main question on this slide, which is, wow, what are we even doing having class? The start of 2022 has been uniquely terrible in ways that I think surpass previous years. And I know that whatever you've been through, it's been bad. I know that we are all, me included, starting this semester from a terrible place mentally. One of my goals is to just help get all of us through this semester. And I'm going to talk about this more later, but if anything ever comes up, if there's anything you need to talk about, if there's anything you need to tell me about, know that we can talk about it and I will find a way to help you if I can. In times like these, it has always seemed to me that the world should have the decency to just stop turning for a little bit so that I can think about things that have happened or I can get some much needed sleep so that I can recover my strength and my optimism. But unfortunately, the world refuses to stop like this. So we will all move forward as we must and it is my hope that this class can be informative, that it can be entertaining, that it can perhaps be a distraction or something else to do other than sit and worry or be sad or however it is that you're feeling. I hope that this class can be a little bit of brightness. Maybe that's overly optimistic, but I have to be optimistic right now. One thing that anthropology and sociology have in common is that we are interested in how society is structured. And one really important way that society in a broad sense is structured is often through kin relationships. And so this semester, we are going to be looking at this foundational topic of social organization and the family. And I've got a set of questions here on this slide in bold that we will be returning to over and over throughout the semester. Like, who around us counts as family and who is not, who is outside of that group? How do we determine who our family members are and why? What's the logic behind one person being family and another person not being family? What are the obligations that we have to family? What are we supposed to do for the people that we're related to? What are the different roles in families? How are people's obligations structured by occupying a particular place in relationship to other people? How do we create new ties to each other through processes like marriage and adoption? Because families are capable of expanding themselves in all of these different ways. These processes both have a profound impact on the meaning of our lives. What we do has meaning in part because we do it for our children, for our siblings, for our parents, but also on the conduct of our everyday lives. We 
choose to do things or not do things because of the way they might impact our families. So having overviewed the course, here are the concrete goals. And I hope by the end of the semester, you can say that you can do all of this. I would like you to have a historical sense of the development of marriage and kinship studies as an area of inquiry within anthropology as well as also within sociology. I also want you to come away with practical techniques for charting genealogical relationships between people and being able to recognize common ways that people organize kinship across different cultures. Through your course assignments, you will have to put these practical techniques to use and learn how to calculate kinship relationships and discuss how these calculations vary across cultures or perhaps even in families within the same culture. Your readings will hopefully provide you with cross-cultural perspectives on marriage and kinship issues that are at the heart of contemporary debates worldwide about family and what family is and what family should be, what it should be doing um, socially, economically, who family should consist of. And so we will be talking about issues like same-sex marriage, migration and international marriages. We'll be talking about love and what that means or doesn't about capitalism and the relationship between labor and the family, between care and labor and care as labor, and also new fertility technologies. If you've taken an online class with me before, you might notice that the format of this class is a little bit different than I've done in the past. And that's because every semester I try to keep what works and throw out what doesn't work and talk with my colleagues about what's working for them and, you know, constantly move myself towards best practices in order to keep the class a place where we can feel connected, even if we're not physically with each other, and also to keep the class accessible because I know a lot of you don't necessarily have your own devices. I know it can be hard to do things on a schedule. I know you've got bad internet connections. And so trying to balance this all together, here's what I've come up with. Two times a week, Monday and Wednesday at noon East Kazakhstan time, video lectures will be posted on YouTube. Those are my deadlines for getting the videos to you. You can watch those videos whenever it is convenient for you. I'm putting them on YouTube because frankly, YouTube is more reliable than Moodle and I want these videos to be accessible for you when you are able to watch them. The new part is how I'm doing discussion leadership. I, in the past, have asked students to make videos, but this semester we're going to try doing discussion leadership live on Fridays during your scheduled class time. And so you can sign up with your classmates to lead a discussion. Um, you must lead discussion at least once during the semester, actually only once during the semester. And when there are no student leaders, I will lead the discussion. And I hope that these live discussions will help us feel connected. If you are shy, um, I don't necessarily require that you have your camera on. And if you don't like talking, there is a text chat on Zoom. So you can contribute to the discussion in whatever way is most comfortable for you. If accessing Zoom is going to be a problem for you, please let me know and we will work out something else for you to do. Also, I want to let you know that you will have three absences from Zoom that you just don't need to explain to me. 
And if you've got more absences, then come to me, talk about it. We will work something out. Okay, so hopefully this makes the Zoom lower stress. Nine times a semester, you will be writing response papers that are about 100 words per reading. And this is not quite every week. It's just most weeks. And then throughout the whole semester, you will be working on a genealogical research assignment that is going to involve interviewing someone, writing a draft paper, peer reviewing a classmate's draft paper and offering yours up for peer review, and then revising it and submitting it to me at the end of the semester. So overall, your kinship chart and research paper combined are going to be 30% of your grade. But you have the whole semester to do it. We're gonna talk about it a lot. You're gonna get feedback. So hopefully that's not scary. Your response papers are worth 50% total, but remember that's divided times nine. The discussion leadership will be worth 10%, and then your discussion attendance and participation will be worth 10%. So when you do show up, I want you to participate. But remember, like I said, you can just type something in the chat and that will count. And this should add up to a total of 100% of your grade. In terms of more formal guidelines for your assignments, all deadlines for assignments are already in the syllabus. The schedule is all set, so you should be able to look at that and know when everything will be due. Information about response papers is already on Moodle. There's a PDF right there that tells you all about how to write them, that talks about the length they should be, mostly 200 to 400 words a week. Um, again, talking about multiple authors. And there is a discussion leadership sign up sheet on Moodle. When you click on it to go sign up, before the sign up area, there is actually a set of instructions about how to lead discussion. Information about your semester paper projects will be distributed very soon. The date for that is on the syllabus too. Never fear, you will have the information you need to do your assignments in time to do those assignments and do them well. I'd like to wrap this presentation up by talking about a few of my course policies. The first one is that I don't accept late work. The reason for that is that students almost never turn in late work and the whole time you're thinking oh i could still turn it in and you know maybe if it's really good it'll be okay that she takes off five percent or ten percent and you just torture yourself late work it, it just doesn't happen what i do is i offer extensions generously i will give you a new deadline and i will never take points off but you have to come talk to me about it in advance. So if there's any kind of reason why you can't get something done, just send me an email and we will sort it out. You can also pop in to my office hours, which are going to be live on Zoom, and we can also talk about it then. We will sort everything out for you so that you can get your work done. In case of emergency, obviously, you don't know that an emergency is going to happen, but please contact me as soon as possible, as soon as your brain is capable of remembering that you have professors who need to know that you broke your leg or something. Second, I do not tolerate plagiarism. You've all probably heard a basic definition of plagiarism, but basically plagiarism occurs when you present the words or findings of other people, other writers, other scholars, other researchers, as if they were your own words. This includes some practices that are very obviously bad and wrong, 
such as copying or pasting from other sources directly into your paper. However, there are a number of smaller infractions, or they may seem smaller, but they're still plagiarism because they still have the effect of making other people's words seem like they're your words. So for example, when you borrow text or findings from another paper and you don't cite that paper, that is plagiarism. Even if you put quotation marks around it, I still don't know where it's from, so I don't know, maybe the quotation marks are decorative. You have to cite the works you borrow from, and you have to cite them in the text itself, not just in your reference list. You also need to put exact quotes from other writers in quotation marks so that they are bracketed, set away from your own text, and clearly marked as someone else's. Plagiarism can also occur when you take a quote from a source and maybe just change around a few words. No, that doesn't work. That's still plagiarism. If you are not going to use an exact quote, then you need to restate the ideas or findings that you are quoting entirely in your own words in a way that demonstrates your own understanding. Cases of plagiarism will receive an immediate grade of zero and will also be reported to the disciplinary committee. Please, please do not plagiarize. Finally, I want to say this is a sensitive class. It's probably the most emotional <laughs> class that I teach because it touches at the core of our most important social relationships. Being polite, kind, and empathetic to your classmates and your instructor is essential for this class to go well. You can disagree, but you gotta be nice. Personal misconduct is defined as online or in-person rudeness, harassment, or bullying, and so on. In order to keep our virtual class as safe a space as possible on Zoom for talking about these sensitive issues, please know that I will be taking any personal misconduct very seriously. So that's everything. I think this presentation was a little longer than most of your lectures will be, so thank you for sticking through it. A full syllabus is available on Moodle along with links to sign up for discussion leadership. And again, this link also includes instructions for discussion leadership. It has links for your Zoom office hours and for Friday discussions, and it has instructions for writing response papers. I'm really looking forward to getting to know all of you this semester, and I hope that we can get through this together.